As we continue in our study of biotechnology, we're now going to talk about genetically modified organisms and gene therapy. So genetically modified organisms are um, organisms that have been modified genetically by adding DNA in, using some kind of DNA technology like recombinant DNA that we talked about the last time. Oftentimes bacteria are the ones that are used and, and are really the best things for doing this because they're, they're um, easily handled in the lab. They have plasmids that can be used as a vector and sometimes bacteriophage uh, viruses that can be used as a vector for gene cloning. They're pretty rapidly grown and um, pretty inexpensively as well. And you can make large amounts of particular proteins um, by growing them in culture. And oftentimes, they can secrete those proteins directly into the growth medium, and then you can harvest it pretty easily. So they are used for a lot of different genetically modified, uh, or uh, making genetic pro uh, proteins of various kinds. Yeast cells can also be modified. They're eukaryotes, and so a lot of times they can be used uh, to pick up uh, DNA that would be more easily uh, handled by a eukaryotic cell rather than a prokaryote. They also have plasmids that can be used as vectors, and sometimes they're better at synthesizing and making those eukaryotic proteins than the bacteria are because they have the, the eukaryotic mechanisms within their cell. There are some proteins that have to be made by mammalian cells. Uh, if, you have, if you're trying to produce glycoproteins that have chains of sugars attached to them, uh, like some of the ones listed here on the slide, erythropoietin and factors to treat hemophilia, those have to be made by mammalian cells grilled in cultures. And so there are various kinds of cultures uh, that, are, that are lines of mammalian cells that can be used to grow the, and produce the kinds of proteins that we're talking about. So we can engineer things other than bacteria. Here's an, here are some examples of uh, recombinant DNA protein products. Human insulin and growth hormone are very commonly made by E. coli bacteria that have been engineered to make them. Uh, a couple of other things that are listed here, some human products, some for other. This is bovine growth, growth hormone that is for cows. Um, then we have some Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is yeast, uh, can produce interferons as well as E. coli that can be used to treat viral infections of various kinds. And then some have to be done in mammalian cells like the ones that were listed here. DNA technology has really changed the pharmaceutical industry. Now you can make specific drugs for that are very specific to, to individual people. Um, we already have the hormones that are produced by DNA technology, technology like insulin and human growth hormone. And then we can also test, use DNA technology to test for various kinds of inherited diseases, produce vaccines and harmless variants of pathogens that can stimulate the immune system to work properly. Um, it, it's even possible now to uh, produce, produce um, anti-cancer drugs that are specific to one person's cancer by using DNA technology and, um, and transforming organisms. Another thing that genetically modified organisms called GMOs okay, are doing is they're used a lot in agriculture. Uh, GMOs have one or more genes that are introduced by artificial means and we call those changed species transgenic organisms. There are various plants that are being produced genetically that, that are more resistant to herbicides. There's a whole line called Roundup Ready Plants, and uh, that means that you can treat the, uh, the field that you've grown your crops in with Roundup or, or herbicide, and it won't kill the, um, the crops. It'll only kill the weeds, and that's really beneficial if you're a farmer <coughs> and don't need to spend a whole lot of time treating for weeds. Uh, you can also make plants. That and animals that have uh, more improved nutritional qualities and can help address various kinds of malnutrition and other other nutritionally related conditions. And so, lots of things can be done to, to benefit mankind. The other problem is that it that it these GMOs raise concerns about health and safety, and there are a lot of different things that are that are um, against using GMOs widely. Um, po some people are concerned that by genetically modifying organisms, you can introduce allergens into the food supply that could cause problems for people that have specific allergies. Or you could spread genes to cluster related organisms. For instance, if you have Roundup Ready cotton that you plant and, and uh, so the cotton gets um, cross fertilized with uh, or cross pollinated with a different kind with some kind of weed that's outside the field, you could end up with, with um, herbicide resistant weeds. And that's not very good if you're in the farming industry. 
So that we've got all kinds of regulatory agencies that are working on the things like this, talk, talking about the safety of these products, how they need to be labeled, and other self, self safe uses of biotechnology. This is one of those controversial topics, as we mentioned, that we have in uh, biotechnology. Another biotechnology process that's, that's very helpful is gene therapy. And this is aiming to treat some kind of disease by supplying a functional allele for a gene that's not working properly. So um, there are a couple of different uh, ways that it can be done. One possible procedure is to clone that allele that, that is uh, functional and insert it in a vector that is a retrovirus and then use the virus to deliver the gene to, um, to some cells grown in culture from the particular patient and then, uh, and then insert those um, cells back into the patient for growth and division. Uh, it, there's a lot of potential here. And they're still working on some of these things. Um, it's best uh, used to treat disorders that are traceable to a single defective gene, and there are a lot of disorders that are not able to be traced that way. So it's only, it's only um, possible in certain kind of cases. But it's definitely an alteration of the individual's genes. So here's, here's a process that you might follow. You've got your clone gene for the normal allele. You've got the RNA genome of the virus here, the retrovirus. And then you can grow that in bone marrow cells or whatever kind of cells that you have that the individual needs. This would be something like for um, sickle cell anemia. And so you would you, uh, grow bone marrow cells from the individual in uh, in culture, infect those with the virus, and then you would, uh, as those cells grow, th grow uh, with the viral DNA in there, then you could take those engineered cells and inject them back in the patient, and at least some of the cells would take hold in the bone marrow and produce at least some normal blood cells with normal hemoglobin rather than the sickle cell hemoglobin. Um, the first successful gene therapy trial was in the year 2000. Uh, they tried to treat some children that had a uh, that had an immune disorder called SCID, severe combined immune deficiency. Uh, these are the children that we they used to call bubble bubble children because they had to, to remain isolated from everybody else so they didn't pick up anything because their immune system didn't work properly. The, uh, the first trial helped nine of the children, but it caused leukemia in three of them. There were some un unforeseen uh, uh, results there, and it, there was one death that resulted from the gene therapy. And so there are lots of controversial things about gene therapy as well. We need to look at control mechanisms that can help the individual make appropriate amounts of product at the right time. Um, <clears throat> we need to figure out how to insert genes into cells without harming other cell functions and so forth. So there are a lot of uh, a lot of concerns that are related to gene therapy, but it still is a very promising field of biotechnology and it will be something that probably will be done even more in the future as they learn more about how to make it work properly. And this concludes the lesson on genetically modified organisms.